Hello, welcome to the first in the brand new NCFE 20 minute theories T level series. This series aims to break down each of the theoretical and pedagogical approaches covered in the education and early years T level into bite sized videos in tutor and student friendly formats. Today's 20 minute session will support understanding of the what you need to teach aspect of the qualification specification. This will support in teaching and learning and formative assessment activities of element two, supporting education. In this video, over the next 20 minutes, we will focus on knowledge point 2.3, cognitive constructivism theory. So let's have a look at what will be covered in today's session on cognitive constructivism theory. We will define the key principles, explain pedagogical approaches, explore evidence which supports cognitive constructivism theory. And throughout this video, we will shine a spotlight on important terms. At the end of the video, links will be made to teaching and learning activities to support the delivery knowledge point 2.3 with relation to cognitive constructivism theory. So let's begin. Let's start by exploring the key principles of cognitive constructivism theory. Assimilation, learning, learning builds on what students already know and can do. Accommodation, knowledge is actively constructed through a process of discovery. And sequential and schematic, so learning follows a sequence of stages. An example of this theory in the early years includes when the child encounters a horse, they might assimilate this information and immediately call the animal a dog. The process of accommodation then allows the child to adapt the existing schema to incorporate the knowledge that some four-legged animals are horses. It is all about incorporating new information and experiences into our pre-existing ideas or viewpoints. Another example in the classroom could be a college student learns a new computer program. Can you think of any examples? This might be a good time to pause the video to extend your discussion with your peers. You can make use of the question on the screen as a starting point or generate your own based on what was just discussed. Describe a situation from placement where you have observed Cognitive Constructivism Theory. Now we will explore pedagogical approaches. High scope is a way of working with children based on the idea that children learn best from active learning experiences, which they plan and carry out themselves. In this way, children learn that they are capable able to make decisions and solve problems about activities which are personally meaningful to them themselves. You may have experienced this in placement. If so, share your ideas with your peers. Then we have project-based learning. Students engage in real life problems, such as designing a product and are responsible for their choices, decisions and solutions. This is a way of engaging students and motivating the learning in a slightly different way. What are your thoughts about this approach? Have you experienced this before? If so, what were the benefits? The next pedagogical approach is virtual reality. Using digital technology, learning takes place within a simulated real world environment. The student directly interacts with objects, tests out their ideas and instantly experiences the result of their actions. Thinking about the connections with this theory and co connectivism theory, what do you think the benefits of virtual reality are? Pause the video at this point to extend your discussion with your peers. What are the key instant recalls the facts of constructive, co cognitive constructivism. You could create a knowledge organiser for the whole class. Let's take a look at the underpinning evidence. So far, we've explored approaches 
So let's have a look at the evidence which supports these approach, approaches in practice. Consider Piaget stages of cognitive development. Specifically, he believed that as children's thinking develops from one stage to the next, their behaviour also changes, reflecting these cognitive developments. The stages in his theory follow a specific order, and each subsequent stage only occurs after the one before it. Starting with the sensory motor stage, which is the first phase of children's cognitive development. During this stage, children primarily learn about their environment through their senses and motor activities. You may have seen this in placement when children are putting things in their mouths. Then comes the pre-operational stage. At the age of two, children enter this pre-operational stage where their ability to use mental representations rather than the physical appearance of objects or people improves greatly. Examples of abstract representations include engaging in pretend play and talking about events that happened in the past or people who are not currently in the room. Other interesting cognitive advances occur during this phase. For example, children understand causality. Children also understand identities where items and people remain the same, even if they look different. For example, at some point during this stage, a caregiver dressing up as Santa Claus might not be as convincing. Then comes the concrete operational stage, which begins around the age of seven. During this stage, children are more capable of solving problems because they can consider numerous outcomes and perspectives. All of their cognitive abilities are better developed in this stage, categorising, spatial awareness and number. And then the formal operational stage. At the age of 11, children enter this stage. Abstract thought characterises at this stage. Children can think about abstract con concepts and are not limited to a current time person or situation. They can think about hypothetical situations and various possibilities, like situations that don't exist yet, may never exist, or might be unrealistic and fantastical. In your small groups or reflecting independently, outline each stage and begin with a definition and then add a brief description. In your small groups or reflecting independently, can you think of any examples of development at each stage? Bruna, 1966, was considered concerned sorry, with how knowledge is represented and considered this through different modes of thinking or representation, proposing three modes of representation, an active representation, action-based, iconic representation, image-based, and symbolic representation, language-based. Unlike Piaget, who believed cognition occurred in age-related stages, Bruna suggested that cognitive development could be promoted by thinking about how it's shared, an enabling environment and a nurturing adult being paramount in the cognitive process of children and less so their age, often referred to as the more knowledgeable other. Next, we have Kolb. Kolb's experiential learning cycle, which views learning as a cycle with each stage of the cycle impacting the next one. Kolb suggested that by going through the cycle, it was possible to form increasingly complex and abstract, abstract mental modes of intended learning. Effective learning develops when a person progresses through a cycle of four stages, having a concrete experience, a new experience or situation, or a new understanding of an existing experience, followed by an observation of and reflection on that experience, followed by analysis and conclusions, which are then used to test a hypothesis in future situations, resulting in new experiences. Undertake your own research to find an illustrated model of Kolb's experiential learning cycle. Consider the following key terms, making notes to share in a peer group discussion, diverging, assimilating, converging and accommodating. Confident understanding of the vocabulary, vocabulary put you in a strong position for core exams and for professional discussions. 
Using theory to support your practical activities and planning, teaching and assessment demonstrates a deep level of understanding of child development and learning principles. And here on your screen are a few of those technical language words that we have discussed so far. Tutor packs have been created with group and individual tasks to support the teaching and learning. This one, for example, what do you think about Piaget's and Bruner's view of the development of cognition in young children? Discuss these differences and use examples to support your understanding of Bruner's views on cognitive constructivism. So let's reflect on what has been discussed in this 20 minute theorist ep episode. The key principles of cognitive constructivism theory an explanation of pedagogical approaches and their application, exploration of evidence used to underpin the theory, and relevant tier three vocabulary and or models, and activities to support making the links between theory and practice. Hopefully, you can now understand the key principles of cognitive constructivism theory. Finally, feedback and evaluation can be given using the QR code on the screen. This helps us know what you enjoyed and what we can improve next time. I hope the objectives of the, of the session were achieved and that attending the session was valuable and will have a positive impact on your teaching and learning. Thank you for listening.